Okay, so if you're saying to yourself, this girl looks like Laura Farquhar from Shrek, forget you. We have to go, we have to talk about this. We have to talk about this right now. I'm in the middle of the fight between Meliodas and Escanor, and it is getting real. So the last couple of episodes I did, I think, was six, seven, eight, and nine, when I talked about pretty much Meliodas's and Elizabeth's curse that they had to deal with. So some things that I pulled from the facts that I gained. So we all know that Meliodas is the son of the Demon King, and he's next in line. And by this time, we should know that Elizabeth, she's the daughter of the Queen of the Goddess race. So basically, these are two spoiled brats. I mean, uh, people who basically are not doing what their parents tell them to do for the sake of change cool so we go to this place um i'll insert the name i forget right now and then they have an encounter with zeldris you know and meliodas who's already angry at everything that's happening with elizabeth he goes to attack Zeldris only to find out that it's a fake that was created by Melascula. So Melascula then absorbs Meliodas in this uh, prison to pretty much trap him so he can't break loose. This gives her free range to pretty much attack the rest of the seven deadly sins and she does. So we see you know flexes from everybody. We see Deanne with her strength that she learned from Droll. We see King with his strength that he learned from Gloxenia. You know, Exconor got an opportunity to flex. The only one that appeared weak to me was Bond. He had to get saved by Elaine. But we're going to let that go. You know, he could have had an off day. We all have off days. I get it. Push comes to shove. Meliodas breaks free from the prison that Melascula has him trapped in. Now, this prison was so powerful that it required Meliodas to unleash all of his magical powers in order to break free. Now, this makes Meliodas kind of like spaced out. He's no longer the captain of the Seven Deadly Sins. He's back to the captain of the Ten Commandments. He is basically in attack mode. Melascula even says, you know, this this is what we were afraid of even when we were ten commandments so he's pretty much not anything to be messed with so now Escanor, you know had merlin trap him in the perfect cube with meliodas in order to hash things out and so far y'all i'm about to lose the hairs in this wig because it is real Meliodas he stabbed him once es Escanor and then Escanor noontime came he underwent this huge transformation he basically turned into a humanized incredible hulk it was amazing that's why I pretty much stopped we're gonna see what else happens and then I'll be back Okay, so I just finished the fight between Meliodas and Escanor, and I really did expect it to be a little more deadly than that. And I get why it wasn't longer, because Escanor has one minute to um, power up to his peak potential. He's invincible. Not even Meliodas can um, hurt him. So that makes him a minute man, right? But um, so I'm, I'm really pleased that what I saw, you know, Escanor was extremely prideful. He had the power, he had the, the mouth to bag it up. But my issue is if Merlin can punch him down and, and make him fall out like that, why didn't she just cut out the middleman and do that to Meliodas herself? It would have been way quicker and way less dramatic. But what do I know? Okay, now Bond is finally realizing how weak he's been throughout the whole series, and he's pretty much getting upset about it, and Elaine's like, no, but I really do agree with Bond. I'm just like, why are you so weak? 
why is Barnes so weak? Like, I get it. The fox hunt and the snatch are pretty much the only thing he has going for him at this point. But that doesn't, you know, excuse the fact for him. Everybody else has a power up, even Elaine. She pushed past her limits, like Captain Yami always says. She pushed past them. Where is Bond's power up? Esfenor got one. Meliodas, Deanne, Elizabeth, everybody got one except Bond. And I'm waiting to see it. And I'm sure it'll be awesome. You know, Merlin's always awesome. So we don't, we never know what Merlin has up her sleeve. So she's just like, I'll kill all y'all. Merlin, she's, she's always been about their life. So I'm waiting to see, like, is Bond gonna do anything special? Like, cause he's just been getting saved. He's been a damsel in distress this whole, this whole series. Okay, so we finished the fight between Escanor and Meliodas. And this fight leaves both of them, like, impaled. Neither of them can regain consciousness. Well, of course, it'll take Escanor a little longer than Meliodas, right? Now we have the team struggling to prevent Meliodas from returning back into the real deal. Like, they're trying to stop that. So during this time, we are reintroduced again to King Arthur, who guides the little eyeball with wings to this cellar where a lot of the previous townspeople of the city of Camelot are pretty much taking refuge, right? He meets up with his master and they discuss a plan to go back to Camelot. And Abal monster, he was like, are you crazy? Zeldris is still over there. He'll kill you for sure. And Arthur um, says, well, once I get my sword back, It'll be no issue. Zeldris will be no issue for me. And the sword, of course, staying true to history, is Excalibur. They pan over to see Zeldris trying to lift it and nobody can. It's the same concept of Thor and Mjolnir. Um, you know, the only one that has been deemed worthy can truly wield the sword. And that's the same case, which is why Zeldris is not able to move the sword. He gets this transmission from this creepy voice and it turns out to be the current demon king or he and Meliodas' father. And he is like, yeah. He said, the demon king is about to awaken. And Zeldris is like, but bro, it's a barrier that's blocking you. How are you going to get here? And he was like, no, not me. Meliodas. We get clues from his daddy that Meliodas is about to waken as the Demon King. And he also gave Zeldris the order to go and retrieve him. So this basically tells me that Meliodas or Elizabeth or any of the other Seven Daily Sins are not going to be powerful enough to prevent Meliodas from reverting back to his true demon form. And I think that this is very interesting. I... We'll be watching the rest of this later today because it's juicy. It's juicy. And um, on C uh, episode 14, so this has been a recap of 12, 13, and 14. I hope you guys have a great day. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. And don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe.